saying I would turn some cakes out, that's all. Um, I had to follow through once I was in. I think of something that we all do every single day of our lives. Um, you all got to DC London. You essentially did that in every one. I presume you did it in an agile way. You didn't plan from the start every single turn in the car or every single platform you went on to and uh, became by train before you ever set off. You defined a goal at the start. You knew what you had to do, the things that you might like to do, um, and so on. And then you got into it and you had to change your plans as you went along. But you always kept the goal, actually getting here, in mind all the way and kept thinking, okay, I need to get there. Oh, I might get a coffee on the way. Oh, I might pop in to see my brother because he's in London. Yeah? But I'm still going to get to the City University. We're doing that job. And the reason agile methodologies exist, and there are a few of them, um, is, in my mind, it's not so that you know how to do agile, because as I said, you already do it, but it's to help your own um, individual methodology match up with others in your team, so that you can do things without it being a surprise to everybody else. Um, so, if you use something like Scrum or DSDM or Kanban, you all have this little set of rules that say, okay, these are the things we're going to do and this is how we're going to manage it so that everyone's doing it in slightly the same way. That's how it makes sense to me. Um, and because of that, it, that's all the tools are, that's all the methodologies are in my mind. So how you implement them past that point is up to you. And it's a negotiation with the team. Um, agile history, so a lot of these things came from, and the term really came from, I think called the Agile Manifesto, which is a group of people that got together and tried to kind of put it all into words, what was going on. And this is pretty much my only slide. Um, this is why I'm not too worried about being around to them. Um, it kind of put together some rules uh, that we've got there. So they said, which things are important? These are the values that they saw uh, in Agile. So it was things like individuals and interactions is more important than the processes and the tools. How those people interact and how they work together is the big deal. Rather than having some sort of Prince 2 Things too. You produce lots of uh, documentation and so on. You, you have this really rigid method. Um, working software is more important than comprehensive documentation. There's some collaboration over contract negotiations and responding to change more than over a plan. So being able to deal with change, it will happen on every project. Will happen. Believe me, I know. Um, now, they were careful about the way they, were, they worded this. So, they said over. In other words, not instead of. You can't not do some of these things. It's just a case of choosing when you're appropriate. And thinking, what is it that we're really trying to attempt to, to do? What are the things you kind of want to, want to achieve? And these are sometimes some of the ways that you kind of need, you need them in the background. But they are in the background. Well, that was the idea of the Agile Manifesto, anyway. Um, and then, once people kind of got into that and were starting to produce methodologies that implemented these values, these are values that these people always held together and should. So always hold these values and always keep thinking back, am I, in my project and with my team, and the way that I'm doing things, we hold them to the values of our job. It's not enough to say, so if you're in Scrum, well, we do sprints, or we do uh, standard meetings. Always be thinking, what are you achieving <coughs> by doing the sprints and the standard meetings? Because it might change the way that you do them, and it might actually
actually mean that you don't do them in the way that they're defined in the Scrum Book or the DSDM Attorn Manual or the, I don't think you've ever read the Kanban stuff actually, if I'm really honest. Okay? You might change them. Changing stuff so it makes sense to your team, brilliant. Because that's agile in itself, that's you being agile, that's great. Yeah? Okay, we'll come back on those. Um, as I say, there are more than one methodology that looks at well, actually there's hundreds from what can work out. Um, a couple I mentioned there, Scrum, Kanban. Uh, I like DSDM, I'm a DSDM advanced practitioner who's been using a lot of place I've worked last. Um, and actually I'm a real fan of using DSDM to fill in some of the gaps that's in Scrum. Some of the things that getting some firm foundations at the start of the project and how you deliver at the end, which in the core parts of Scrum are not really there. Scrum's really good at engineering and getting things moving, and then it needs some bits on the end at the start to, to kind of make it all make sense. I don't know if some of you might have heard the term, um, I always get this wrong way around, water scrum fall, um, which is kind of saying you do need things hanging off the end of either side of, of Scrum, and how do you do it? It does make a difference. So I'm going to give some notes at the end. Uh, I'll get to actually what I've got here that I'm, with, that I'm kind of keeping me going with that slide. Um, and then, yeah, some links in there that you'll be able to kind of follow, and one of those is to uh, a paper all about using DSD and Scrum together. Um, something else I stole from DSDM, because it's handy and it's easy, and I could remember where to find it, was some principles. Um, so, so I'm just checking with the time. Uh, some principles. Well, I'm going to read them out first of all, and then I'll kind of go back to them. So, first one was focus on the business need. Two, deliver on time. Three, collaborate. Four, never compromise quality. Five, build incrementally from firm foundations. Six, develop iteratively. Seven, communicate continuously and clearly. And eight, demonstrate control. So we'll go back to the start. So focus on business need. When you're creating these firm foundations, this kind of start to your project, really spend time getting a good definition across the whole team for what is the business need, what is it you actually attempting to do, and make sure everybody in the project understands it the same way, because that will so help you get things right. I guess one of the hardest things in a new project is making sure you've actually got the same interpretation of the goal in the whole team. Um, but once you've got it, keep making sure you've still got it. So keep going back to your business sponsor saying, look, are we going in the right direction? Keep them up to date and say, are we? Because things change. While you're building the project, you can't do a website, a complicated piece of work in one day. I wish I could have done a fortune. Um, but, so the world is moving on while you're working. That business is changing. Make sure what you're doing is still, still appropriate. Um, and keep getting that. And also, work out what is the minimum usable subset of features. So, make sure that you understand um, what it is is the minimum thing you can deliver and work on that first with the highest priority. Uh, it's like a video recorder. It has to be able to record videos. The minimum usable feature is not a remote control. You can still record videos without a remote control. Okay? So it's working out, just because something's fancy, isn't necessarily have to be there. Um, I said deliver on time. It's kind of an interesting one, because agile projects generally fix the length of time that you spend on a project, or the cost. The time and cost, and let the delivered items be flexible. The reason to do that is because it means you can, uh, you know you're going to deliver something 
And because you've previously defined your minimum usable set of features, you make sure you deliver at least that. Pretty much anything past that point is all bonus. It's almost like free website goodies in terms of what people think. That's how I try to explain it to clients anyway so far. Um, delivering on time is kind of one of those. It's things like time boxes. So working in, uh, well I say it's time boxes, most people using Scrum would say sprints, using those because it fixes the amount of time that you can waste on something as well. So if you try to do something, somebody within the team has an idea of, I want to use a particular thing because um, I think it would be brilliant, or this place thing, uh, something like that. Then because you've got fixed time boxes, you know up front and someone says, the project manager says, um, let's give it a go. You know, you can only waste so much time, three weeks or two weeks or however long those things are set to. That's always worth doing. And don't worry about wasting it as well. Have a go at something because you know you've got that safety net of the time boxes. <laughs> We've got collaborate here. Within the team, being able to collaborate is absolutely such a big deal. And work out what your principles are, how your team is going to collaborate. And it needs to change depending upon your project. Not every client is going to want to look at a Kanban board. I've got one at the moment, but he couldn't do that. It wouldn't be for them. So all those different information radiators, ways of making it so the team can collaborate together, are a big deal. Um, also, collaborate comes into some of the making sure the team members are appropriately empowered. And they've actually got the ability to make decisions falls into that. Because you can't collaborate with someone if then if they're having to go away to get the answer or be overridden all the time. So it's really good to spend time at the start of the project making sure that they've got that ability to say, let's do this. Or let's no we can't do that. It makes such a big difference. Um, also, I've got down here, build a one team culture. And by that I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> does that mean five? Does it mean top way? Half way? Okay. <laughs> 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 I've just got away, but I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, build a one team culture. Make sure that um, and lots of full coverage of unit tests that is not appropriate for something that's a quick website is never going to be brought come back to it. It might be for a, a tiny little thing. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. That's okay. You decide within the team, decide what you're going to do, then do it. I said about number five was building commentary from the foundations. That's all about People say deliver early, deliver often. It pretty much is that. It's kind of <coughs> keep from an early stage bringing things forward to actually use and see. Because it keeps people involved in the project. And it's such a big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that might even be something on paper. I don't know, people talk about, you know, prototyping in code and stuff like that. I have a lot of time, I'm sat with a client drawing pictures with them. And that's my first level of feedback. It's because they'll be saying, no, no, not that, not that. It's a prototype, you're doing it on paper, and you're getting, you're getting feedback and building this, building incrementally towards the goal of um, a particular part or a function of the website. It is perfectly acceptable to have feedback on something very rough. In my mind, it is anyway. As long as the client know all the team, team members know that's what's to expect, it won't be a surprise. Again, that comes back to why you use that methodology. Um, keep reassessing the priorities of all of the requirements that you have. Keep them back in each time box or each sprint. Many of you will know this. Re using things like more scopes and must, should, could, and weren't within this time box. Uh, keep coming back to those and redoing them because they change all the time. 
Um, where am I? We've got to sit, develop, iteratively. Um, it's okay to kind of really do the design up front in the early stages of the project so that people can see what's going on. Uh, it's completely okay. Um, and accept. When you start doing something, you might sit there and write a user story or something like that. <laughs> until the until the business representative is seeing that in uh, real life, actually coming up, they they they, they do struggle to visualise that, and it's okay, and it will change. Just meeting the, the story isn't the end of the day. You're trying to meet their goals or the team's goals, so sometimes you've got to adjust and adjust iteratively across, even even within strength. And so I'm saying get the real answer from the real person who's going to actually say, yes, I'll have that. It's no good delivering something just because they said it in a, um, in a user story earlier in the, in the week. Keep with them. If you've got the opportunity to sit literally with the person who's wanting something or is the business representative, that is brilliant. It's not always possible. I would admit that. Um, I said about communicate continuously and clearly. Um, we've heard lots of people already this, this week I mentioned daily stand-up sessions, uh, how you run those, great, keep, use workshops, get good facilitators to run those workshops. Some people are better than others. Some people, they don't all need to be coders, but some people are just facilitators and they are brilliant at it. Better than me. Better than anyone I know, some people just just can do that and really get a room buzzing and get people moving and get a lot out of it. Um, things like modeling and prototyping, yeah. And as I say, prototyping can be anything. That could be a video showing things. It could be something on. I I, I love those. Um, you know the big post-it sheets that are about that big. Uh, big A1 post-it sheets. They cost a fortune. But they're brilliant for drawing things, and you can sit there and do uh, sessions. I used loads of them. I must have used about a tree's worth already uh, this year. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably where I'm poor. Uh, where was I? Yeah, prototyping. So present them <coughs> really, really often. So as often as you can get them together, present them. The more feedback you get, the better. Um, and that also encourage um, really people in the team to be informed as well. Make sure there's the ability for all members of the team, be they business, tech, uh, project management, to meet and discuss and communicate informally as much as formally. So I know you've got your stand-up meetings in the morning, but work out other ways that we're going to do it. Because sometimes it's those back channels that really work. And think about back to the values of why you're doing that. Because it's the, it's the collaboration. And keep that going. Uh, and the last one, which I'm going to remember to put in my head, because slides are going is demonstrate the trial. Um, actually show that you're in control. Use those tools that you use to do that. Use your time boxes. Use your testing. Use your um, <coughs> tools that do that. Use your <coughs> information radiators, which are things like Kanban boards, where you can see what's happening in the project. And remember, you need to change them, as I said earlier on. Change them depending upon the audience. So, for me, a sprint board or a Kanban board is okay. You can pretty much cope with those. Um, I've met with some clients who were like, why are you showing me this? Send me a document. Okay. And that's okay. Yeah? Because they need to see it in a way that they can consume it. That type of information is fine. Okay? Um, there are some principles. As I said at the start, it's all about 
for, for me, you talk about how you work together and it's, it's not doing Agile, it's being Agile. I think it's kind of what I wanted to say. It's, you don't do Scrum or you don't do DSDM because it's a process and you just follow it because it's what we said we would do. You use it to achieve these things. Yeah? And change it. Experiment with it. Change it all the time. Think, you know what, we're going to add it, like, should we, this time on this project, add in this, see how it works. At the end of the project, reassess. Think, is it working? Shall we use this for new things? Yeah, always do that. Always look to keep it active. Um, so, I mean, some of the things that I, I wanted to do, well, I've rushed this now because I was actually going to keep asking questions of you all the way through, which is why I still stick this in the bottom of the page saying, please speak out. And go. Um, which was, <laughs> um, I kind of want to learn from you as well as you, know, you listening to this about how you're doing some of these things. So, if we went back to the start of that list and we went to um, build on firm foundations, it would be stupid. Uh, if we went back to the start, the start of it, sorry, focus on business deep and try to keep them in the same order. Um, how do you currently, do anyone tell me, how do you currently get a good idea within the team about how, what that business need is when you actually do a website? How do you actually go about doing that? Tell me. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, so at the very start of the project, if, you want, if, you, if you've got a project, how do you know within the team, do you have like a single place you go where you can see we are going to, by such and such a day, deliver X? How, how do you go about managing that and making sure that the team understands that? Does that make Is that something you all spend time working on at the start of the project? I guess um, one tool we use is sort of sprint goals, so we know sort of objective of the entire project. Yeah. But for each chunk of work, we'd set a clear sprint goal or goal for that particular chunk. So you've got a very sort of focus for that yeah. piece of work, and then you, you know that obviously is different for each yeah. for each sprint or each chunk of work. That's okay. one tool we found that works <coughs> quite well. Okay. Is that like visible, like on a wall or? Yeah, it's it's not it's in our sort of software, but it could be on a wall or you could sort of. But you write it as a team, so you kind of you come up with that. You know, agree what it is as a team, so if we to buy into that, mm. to that, to that um, goal. Yeah, and the the whole team can see that. Yeah, including the including the, the client, or the, you know, so they're happy that that's the, yeah, yeah. That that's what they're going to see at the end of that sprint or that chunk of work. Yeah. <coughs> so if we want to deliver on time. How do you work out um, how you can split the team, your project into time boxes? How do you work out how long those time boxes will be? Sprint time boxes, how would you want to describe them? Do you, do you actively think about what that should be per project, or do you just say that they're always X length? <coughs> yeah, not always two weeks. Always two weeks. Why do you choose two weeks? Have you ever thought about it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I encouraged it. <laughs> yeah. It's nice whenever you've got a rule like that to always on a Regular, on a regular basis, question, why do we do two weeks? I hope I haven't set off something that worked out. You have to go back and you'll be like, oh my god, why do we do this? <laughs> I, I think it's kind of cool that to look back and do that and just say, okay, why? What are we, what are we achieving by doing two weeks? It's probably right, as it happens. <laughs> well, I think it probably could be because I, I know about this two weeks or 28 days or yeah. whatever you, you choose with strong if you're doing strong spread or XP or whatever. Um, at least we started as amateurs and still are amateurs in, in agile methodology. But prior to me starting at my company, the developers were all um, 
on the verge of just committing suicide really because of the <laughs> waterfall management is just yeah. wasn't working for them. So I suggested Scrum and they started making it. I mean, the company's pretty much adopted it, you know, the, or the development team has. And as a result, that the development team, um, the, there has been, we've seen, the company saw a big change. We're far more productive than the other team, the sales and marketing, and, um, you know, accounts and product development and research, etc. Um, but one of the things we don't do is say, okay, let's do a two week chunk. We did it first, you know, let's do these, you know, you know, 20, you know four, four, four weeks, I think we originally decided. But now we sort of like, here we have this goal, and sometimes they're like two or three months out. So I think after having this meeting, having this discussion, I think I'll probably go back on and say, maybe we ought to rethink this, you know, you know have more small and discrete chunks to keep our time. Okay, thanks. Um, should we ask you to tell them what time? Well, we're going to have time. Well, we're going to have time. Well, we're going to have time. Okay, um, thanks for that. If there's any very quick questions, like one. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a very quick one. Yeah? Um, so you're talking about um, uh, the sort of one team mentality. Um, we've been doing that job for a year where I work from the side of the road and talk to them. Yeah. They're working with a team that's really too big. To have yeah. a daily standard, and you've got your thoughts on how you, and we're, and we're now in two teams, uh, which is, it has some significant problems. Do, do you do, are you all working on the same project? Yeah. Right, okay. So, what you can do is have multiple teams and have standards within the teams. You might have um, uh, more than one, uh, and then we break the project down and actually have to. This is okay to separate them. As long as you make, you would then have to think about how you do that communication yeah. on a different level. I do get the idea of the stand up because too many people there, it does get massive to try and do it. And yeah, I, I have seen that. Break it down um, and then find other methods of getting that same communication between the people in terms of how they've been added to the Okay. I'm sorry about that time. Um, what I'll do is I'll put these slides and a link to my notes that I've got here on the Drupal Capital Income website as soon as possible when they let you. <laughs>